This is a, this is a real bitch. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today I'm joined by Thomas Middleditch. Uh -huh. You know him as Richard Hendricks in the hit award-winning HBO series Silicon Valley, now in its fourth season. And speaking of, you can catch new episodes on Sundays, 10 p.m. Eastern on HBO. Thomas, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. How are you with hot food? I'm medium with hot food. Sometimes I like a bit of spice. Most times I don't mind a little bit, in fact, seek it. But I've never been one to call myself the master of spice. Well, today, or you might be the master of spice, the king of spice, even. Are oh, you ready to get oh, it going? Yeah, 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 I'm ready. Is it a bad sign when the guest is like, mmm, that's great, and they eat the whole thing? You're okay. off to a great start. You like it? Yeah, but that's minor. Sriracha, who hasn't had that? Probably a couple of people. Losers. Fucking pussies. So my guess is that your more casual fans probably think that your comedy career started in Silicon Valley, but the day one people know that it's been a 15 year long grind. My God. You could even add a couple more years on there if we camp my stints in regional theater. I know that a lot of the people on Second City, they earned their stripes on the uh, cruise ship circuit. Did oh, you did do the that. cruise ship? I certainly did. It was a four month stint. Two months, roughly, we poured out in New York and we went like Bahamas, Bermuda, summer vacation stuff. A lot of like working class, Bronx, Jersey, Queens. I met my first Guidos with the haircut and they'd be like, oh, Second City, let me buy you a shot. Oh my God. What am I gonna see you on SNL, huh, you fucking piece of shit? You know, like that kind of stuff. Like, and then like debaucherousness, like he, like teens getting caught, like fingering each other. on like, Very <laughs> much a rite of passage. Yeah, it was just like, oh my goodness. And then we stopped for the fall tour to watch the leaves change. We went to like Boston, Bar Harbor, Maine, Newfoundland, Quebec City, no one under 50. They played Andrew's sisters on the PA. Everyone was in bed by like 9 p.m. and then the crew would just have like the shift to themselves. I love that second half. My God, the scenery. You know, some people, they poo-poo Tabasco mm -hmm. because it's got a bit of like a vinegar taste in it. And I like that. I like the, I like the That's the what turns part. some people off. Yeah, that's what I like. I think that by virtue of your role that you've probably had some contact with the tech world, do you yeah. find that it's more or less insufferable than the version that you guys portray on the show? I mean, look, it, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be, dim I don't want to throw, you know, the people who like the show under the bus. I'll say this, most of the time where I've met like actual developers and programmers, it's been usually a pleasant experience. I have met some VCs, venture capitalists, who have been less pleasant. It's like your time with them is something that they own and it's like, goddamn right, you'll you'll spend 20 minutes while I tell you how much the show I've lived, you know, that kind of stuff. What if I surprise myself? Is it around this time where people get, you know, like confidence and like, I think I can do this. And then, then I, there's a sobering realization around here where they want to, bring a gun and shoot their brains out on, on internet? I have seen that happen countless times. You well, know, then. I've used this analogy before. It's kind of like a professional wrestler when a wrestler gets yeah. his cockiest, you know, now that's we're sort of the my mark language. of his downfall. Like that's when he gets a chair smashed yeah. over his back. It's okay, well I won't fall into that trap. So I want to talk to you about geekery for a second because in addition Don't know anything about to it. naming your dog after Harry Potter, Correct. You also are no stranger to the Renaissance Fair. Yes. How into it do you get? Do you go in character? Do you talk with an accent? I don't go in character. That would be fucking annoying, and I can't stand meeting those people. Um, I, I have garb, though. I have a, I have some- You go in costume. Yeah, it's like going out to Halloween and not dressing up. You know, it's like that you're not really doing it right. And then what's this scene like there? Because, you know, there's always these stories about how there's kind of uh, like a psychedelic or like shroom sort of subculture. That's what I wanted to believe. I was like, okay, I'll go, I'll stay late. Next thing you know, I'll be invited to an orgy by the firelight. Yeah. But like, frumpy, weird, sort of like s and fan women. What about as a single scene? Like if you were single, do you think that that would be a good place to meet people or not a good place to meet people? It would be a good place to meet a certain type of people. If you're a little bit um, shelled up in real life, a place like that is, is an opportunity to kind to of be To spread weird. your wings. Yeah, 
be who you are. Yeah, the Ren Fair is it's just mainly to be like, I want to go and be a fairy or a barmaid or something and just be weird. So this one is the Queen Majesty. Oh, a nod to my British roots. So I wouldn't be doing my job at First We Feast if we didn't unpackage this rap that you made making fun of McDonald's that somehow, some way became an actual commercial yeah. for Chicken McNuggets. Mm -hmm. McDonald's was just starting its like urban campaign of like, ba -da 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 -da. like it was, it's all like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. like two guys playing basketball, like let's go McDonald's, like whatever, buddly doo doo doo. And I just thought it was so, um, transparently pandery. I don't know, it rubbed me the wrong way. So after like two years of it being online, it got bought. Did that surprise you? It had to have been it kind totally of surprising well, what because was... you were coming from a satirical place. Yeah. So to have them actually acknowledge it and mm -hmm. then validate it is interesting. Yeah, what, what was weirder is before it, before McDonald's bought it, uh, uh, people, who, advertisers who were writing a book on viral marketing used it as an example. So it's in a book. It's referenced also in literature as well. <laughs> mm. There's sweetness in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next part of the show is called Explain That Gram. And what we do is we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, we pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll show you the picture and then you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound Radical. good? Yeah. Right, I love Graham. Uh, you're on, this is from my Graham. Yep. I'm out of Twitter. I deleted it. It's gone. I know. Fuck it. It's too negative. Why did you delete your Twitter? It's mean. Everything's mean on there. It's just noisy. Internet's noisy, and that's like the amplification of the internet's noise. So I always have like kind of that thought, like maybe I should just get rid of everything, and maybe I'd live a happier life because there is so much messaging from like so many different angles, and maybe mm. that's kind of like you know affecting my life and affecting my happiness. Have you found right. since you deleted Twitter, does it feel a li little bit liberating? Well, do you miss it at all? Well, I, I, I first deleted Facebook, don't miss it all. I still sort of have that impulse to be like, oh, I could say that, but I, everything's so mean yeah, there. It is, it's vicious. If it's directed at you, someone you know, just the ether, why, why subject yourself to it? Just get off and then you, it suddenly goes away, it's great. All right, so this first one, you got the Falkland Arms with Patrick Stewart. Yeah, peace to. Patrick Stewart has um, strangely become a very good friend. I do this show called The Improvised Shakespeare Company, also born from out of Chicago. Chicago. Yes, mm -hmm. he has played with us from time to time, and just through that, we've become buddies. And we have recent, I recent, we recently had a trip to uh, old, dear old England, and um, that's how you have to say it. And then we made a made a side trip to the Cotswolds, even though that's not that at all. And uh, he's got a place out there. And then I was kind of split between this Patrick Stewart picture, but there was like another one where it looked like you were playing Monopoly and Reggie Watts was there. It was like a whole that thing. That was, uh, yeah, that was like a, a, a wonderful Motley Crue dinner type of thing. Yes, and we did play Monopoly. And guess who won that game? Thomas. You're fucking right. <laughs> I beat everybody. I beat all, all right. those Hollywood bitches. Rude boys on the lot? Dude. It's all exquisitely like, on brand dorkiness. A couple of the guys thought we should get jackets because we're a gang. What color says the Rude Boys? Yeah, we're Rude Boys on the lot. Sony Pictures lot. Okay, cool. And we found a website that you could order custom jackets and they even have like dice on the back. Wow. Yeah, and then so we thought, okay, we're the Rude Boys. We don't we don't give a care knowing like knowing who we are. We're like, yeah, we're rude. And uh, we took our scooters and we wanted to like scoot around the lot with our jackets and we did this ride and like Two minutes into it, a security officer was like, hey, you can only ride bicycles here, you can't use those. And we're like, oh, we're sorry. <laughs> we like turned, our, turned around and just put them away. Yeah. Blood in, blood out when it comes to rude boys on yeah, the lot. Dude, yeah, then we killed that guy afterwards. So we hunted him down and we shot him in the face. So you've said that on your off days. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> is that you spend hours playing video games. Not hours. Check with the wife. It was literally all hours. day. It she was all day hours. yesterday. She says hours. Much. Yeah. Is the League of Champs still a thing? Wow. How do you know about the old LOC? <laughs> Who told you? I created a little league and a playoffs tournament, and it kind of started growing, and eventually trophies were at uh -oh. the end. People got trophies and stuff. Um, it was super fun. 
Well, I am curious who's, who's spilled the beans. You'll Twitch stream and you get all into it with the headset and stuff. Mm. Do you have any strange interactions with strangers over that headset? Because well, it could be kind of a volatile place. It, um, what I'm coming to, to experience, not only with Twitch, but like social media, is like I'm not sure if all this access is a good thing. Or at least me reading the access. Because <laughs> it's like for every nine very positive people, there's one person who's just a prick. And he's probably 14 years old. But in the world of anonymousness, that 14 year old, like, you're gay, <laughs> or whatever he says, yeah. it like cuts through and is like, oh, I was having such a fun time. I remember the last comment. Yes, I was playing Twitch, I look over this feed and it goes, so this is what being a celebrity has been reduced to, streaming video games online for teenagers. I was like, you're right. <laughs> Exit, sorry guys, I gotta go, <laughs> quit, shut it down. I was like, he's right. What am I doing? I'm, sh I'm trying to be an actor and I'm doing this. And it's so weird that like a little, some troll will really make you reevaluate your life. It's just smokiness to it. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't dislike smoky, but I do like the tang. What do you think of the zombie apocalypse? I mean, I like it. It's fucking hot, though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a creeper as well. So for a lot of actors, working with Martin Scorsese is kind of the holy grail. I know that it was a relatively small role in mm. Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I had to audition quite heavily for that. Scorsese was interesting only in the sense that, like, his AD, I'm assuming it was his assistant director, was uh, <laughs> uh, he's everything that you think he is. He's petite, he's wee, he's happy, and he talks like this. He's like, great, okay, yeah. What you did there, great, try something new, okay. And you're like, huh? <laughs> like, he likes it, try some. do whatever. And you're like, okay. That was it, it was very short and uh, sweet. And, you know, I'm very much supporting in that scene for Jonna. In that bow tie scene, he flicks the shit. Everyone's like, new issue day, you fucking cleaning your thing on new issue, get the fuck out of here. Everyone's like, go, boo, you suck. And I knew a couple people like Brian Saka and some other people that were, and they they got, they got took it upon themselves to get personal, like, you big nose freak. And then extras were like, yeah, you freak, you fucking bird troll. And I'm like, this is terrible. And that went on for like an hour and a half, two hours. You know, you'll have to, at the end of the day, you have to be like, it's just the movie. They don't really think that. This looks like dudes who love pot made this label. And it looks like people are like, oh man, well, you do, you take some like fucking purple kush bro, fucking Hawaii dank, take some bomb beyond insanity, see you later. I think they're gonna have the last laugh on that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. See, it becomes like a different type of spice. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I might not eat the whole thing of that. It's probably smart. So I know that you're a native of British Columbia and here at First We Feast, we care way too much about what people eat. So I want to talk to you about your love for Ruffles <clears throat> All Dressed, oh, the number it. one flavor <sighs> in Canada. <laughs> sure. What do you love about Ruffles All Dressed? Well, if you're a fan of, if you're a fan of zest, if you like zest over heavy flavors. Now there's people who like chips, who like heavy flavors, you know, like barbecue, sour cream, and cheddar. Mm -hmm. uh, you find a lot of heavy flavors in American stores, I gotta be honest. It's very few, very few zesty ones. I gotta help, I gotta help you if you try to take an American away from his sour cream and cheddar. Mm. But, I like the zest. I like salt and vinegar. And they're like all dressed. You think that all dressed is like, was oh, that every flavor on one chip? No, that would be disgusting. All dressed is like a vinegary, zesty kind of thing. And the fact that it's just now making it down here is both great and awful. I mean, there was for a second, for a brief second, Canada had something that you guys didn't. <laughs> we could hold on to it and say, you may have a big army and a big navy and a big air force, but we have all dressed chips and poutine.
All right, so this is Mad Dog 357. Dude, Mad Dog 357, like a caliber of Magnum that I've got underneath my pillow. Just in case an intruder comes out. I'm doing a little guy. You're doing hackers? Okay. But what's good about that? I like the taste better. Mm hmm. You know how the bomb has very few, if any, redeeming qualities? Yeah, it's bullshit. I feel like Mad Dog, at least they're trying to make something happen. Yeah, Mad Dog's at least giving it a goddamn shot. <sighs> it's not nothing, though. Mm mm. How you feeling so far? I feel pretty good. I feel confident <clears throat> I can make it to the end. So before I get to my question, first I want to say congratulations on getting your pilot's license. Thanks, man. Was that kind of a hobby? Was it something that you had your eyes set on for a long time? Or? It's been... <sighs> 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 it's been a... <sighs> it's been a dream... for a while. <laughs> for a while. Had I any... had any common sense... What's the reaction going on in here? You that's doing like some backflips in there. That's like, hey, <sighs> evacuate, go. Do you have to throw up? No, no. But why do I burp all the time? But I've burped some pretty nasty burps. Okay, let's get through it. What What's do you question? remember about your first time flying? Uh, that it was scary, but I enjoyed it. Wow, that creeps. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. Flight. Flight has been an, a, a passion of mine for about 15 years. I got into my flight simulators. Been into those for a long time. A flight came by way of a mil a passion for military history. Start talking about military history, start talking about fighter pilots. I almost exclusively read fighter pilot memoirs. Are you in the Mile High Club? Not yet, because someone's very prudish. All right, Thomas. Are you putting extra on? It hurt. This is Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. It's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. You don't but have to. But it's already on there. It's already on there. And you don't have to if you don't want to, Thomas Miladich. You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. Dom, Dom comes through with a refill. When does the pain usually end, though? Mm. Like, how long is this going to happen? Yeah, if I put a dab on, am I fucked? Listen, for the next 15 or 20 minutes, if you put a dab on it or you don't put a dab on it, you're fucked. I want to. Pride says yes. Brain says no. Let's do it. My dab might be smaller than yours. It's okay. It's okay. This is not a dick measuring contest. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen this move before. Huh. Kind of help? No. <laughs> All right. Do we cheers? Cheers. Too big of a bite. I regret it. <clears throat> What's the big deal with this guy? I probably like contains the hottest known ingredients on the planet Earth. Please use with extreme caution. So now you have a decade and a half's worth of improv experience, and I'm sure that many people think that Thomas Middleditch is much like his character Richard, but most of the characters that you've done over the years, like Dubes and Joey Tortellini, these are big personality characters. Yeah. So if you'll humor me, I'm hoping that while the Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage is channeling through you, that you can summon one of those classic characters to give the people out there a Yelp review on Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage. Oh. I got my publicist over there like, we should stop. It's fine, Rachel. Uh, okay. This is a, this is a real bitch. <laughs> Ooh, was Joy totally like this, right? Let me tell you. The only thing hotter than this, so, than this sauce all the babes that I DJ to every, every night in Vegas. I can't remember all the details. It was a tough episode for not only you, 
but for me as well. Over here, major face sweat. Tummy doing backflips. Tummy doing backflips. But you Tommy know what, backflips over here. You made it through. I did. You cleared the board. You're a better man for it if I look into your eyes. Goddamn right. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Well, I'll be uh, later on shitting bloody hell out of my butthole later on. But other than that, you can check uh, Silicon Valley season four out and also uh, Captain Underpants July. And at some point I'm in a film with Keanu Reeves that's called Replicas, that should be interesting. You're teary a little bit. I'm no superhero, Thomas. I'm no superhero! Wait, this... that's not the lyrics. I'm trying to do some Foo Fighters. I'm yours. What is it? Which one were you trying to do? I don't know. Superhero, babe. Were you trying to do Maybe Enrique Iglesias? <laughs> maybe. I could be your, your hero, hero babe. babe. That's the one. And then maybe I was also get, getting there like... There goes my hero. That I thought one. you were doing the Foo Fighters one. And there's also... Why, I, 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 yeah, Superman's dead. But those guys, Our Lady Peace. You remember? Maybe they're Canadian. It's hard to tell nowadays. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? If you liked the video, maybe meet us halfway. Throw us a subscribe. If you didn't like the video, don't subscribe. I don't want you. I don't want you in the tent. But if you liked the video, subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I love you. More than a friend.